Accreditation is the actual acceptance of right, the, that, the findings, so essentially. Right. That's the uh, so basically this is a test, and this is the approval of that test, so you can get an authorization to operate that piece of equipment, and you can start you know auditing at this point too, and then you will rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat ongoing maintenance. And integrity check and vulnerability scanning, monitoring, logging, all that stuff, rinse and repeat for many, many, many years, hopefully. And that eventually you will dispose of the stuff. And you, you know, project management says that we actually review this stuff, we review with the client and everything else, conclude the success of the project, do your cost benefit analysis, did it work? Were you over, you know, over budget, under cost? Well, you know, what happened? Let's look at the big picture and still lessons learned for the next project. So, <laughs> would you like some easy points? Yes. Left me, Chad. Of course. <clears throat> you got the waterfall spiral joint analysis development or rapid application development, the RAD. And then, of course, clean room environments as well. Ah, that's it. That should be. We should have a one for each one. All right. So let's take some notes here. You got waterfall model, folks. This means let's think of it more like an escalator, one step after another. All right. It's linear in that sense. One step in front of the other. Iterative. You cannot do step fifty until you complete step forty-nine. You can't do step thirty-five until you complete step thirty-four. The problem is that is if there's idle time anywhere in there, you can't go beginning working on a later project, a later task until you complete the task at hand. So it's limited in that sense. Spiral model tends to solve that problem because it looks at, hey, what can we can we finish step 50 while we're you know uh, finishing step two? That way, when we get to step 49, it's already done. It just falls in place. Did it again. Um, a spiral model addresses the time issues with the waterfall model because you can you can do things like idle. Uh, you can take advantage of idle time. So think about like easy way to think about this is a construction site, right? You you want you know you want the siding of the house to um, come exactly when you need it, right? But you don't finish building the walls and then order siding and wait three weeks. You want it to be delivered exactly when you finish the walls. So it's like you plan for that stuff to fall in place. So that it really, you, you can crunch the schedule to complete it in weeks, let alone if you were to do it once that, you know, I can't order the siding until I finish the, uh, the walls of the house, All right? So there's, you know, when you, in a waterfall model, a step-by-step, -step, one in front of the other, it, the time is just way out there. Because you can't do, you can't do 49 right. until you do 48. But with Spiral, you can crunch that together and take advantage of you know everything. You know, as soon as I need it, it's right there. Well, Spiral also take you know, also you know, you basically you're building building capabilities. So you implement capabilities, and then you implement additional capabilities, and then you implement additional capabilities, etc. So, so it's like a lot of people have talked about it in terms of of uh, design a little, build a little, test or you know. Testing. Yeah, remedy, for right. example. So, yeah. You always want to add in new features to, uh, right. to remedy or help that software or heat. Well, that's kind of build a little, test a little. Let's add the new feature, let's test it out, let's get it to work. Okay, let's add a new feature. Mm -hmm. What is joint analysis and development? Actually, that's the one I'm not that familiar with. Joint analysis and development. This is a multi programming environment where. Um, as it states, joint uh, people can join together to work on pro uh, projects together, and, and in a distributed matter. So, you, you ever heard of um, WebDAV? Well, well, web distributed authoring and versioning allows people on multiple locations to work on the same code, but not conflict with each other's actions. So, it's a control environment that does versioning and. And uh, you can look at different pieces of the code. Multiple pieces can work on you know pieces of the code that won't conflict with other people. Then you've got any questions about so that? so that's kind of concurrent. What do you mean concurrent? Uh, you got multiple people working on different things at the same time. Yeah, yeah, okay. In that case, yeah. That's okay. more like modular versus a parallel, which would be spiral modular. Yeah. Well, let's 
pull off formal definition just to make sure. We'll make sure we get that right. Joint analysis and development. Process of prototyping life cycle, dynamic systems, methodology, um, collect business requires while developing new system information coming. JAD process also includes approaches for enhancing user applications, expediting development, uh, improving uh, quality of specifications, workshops, uh, joint workshops, and the knowledge workers and IT specialists uh, are able to resolve any difficulties or indifferences between two parties regarding a new information system. Workshops follows a detailed agenda in order to guarantee that all uncertainties between parties are covered and help prevent miscommunications. So that's where your web dab fits in. It's going to organize that process, which is just web distributed authoring and versioning. So if you look at that third paragraph, it's interesting that they've done some field study tests. Little is actually known about the effectiveness of the practice. But they did some field studies that showed that it was effective on small projects, but not very effective on large projects. I believe that now, because anytime you add volume to something, you add complexity, right. and communication will typically break down at that point. So identify um, uh, project objectives, identify critical success factors, develop the project deliverable, deliverables. So this is also not only the web dev, but um, but also the complete project management around it as well. You guys heard of case tools? Case tools are also very important to know. I think it's computer-aided software engineering. Yeah, computer-aided software engineering. It's basically all your tools, your versioning, your debuggers, and everything a developer would need to basically program. You, know, you don't want your programmer to bring his own toolkit in to work and, you know, it's not like a mechanic that bring, brings its own tools. In the IT world, we have to supply the tools. We have to give them the environment to program in. And so case tools are what we use to give them you know, the tools to do their job. Well, that should make better sense. Or rapid application and development is um, you know very very quickly development. You get like a small team together and you basically say go at it. So remedy also could be uh, rapid application development. Basically, small teams working on the fly, but also fairly small little, uh, programs. Well, it's large app. You can not be able to be done in a rack. Yeah, it, it's more like uh, tiger teams, if you will. But you can break a larger system into multiple okay. small right. systems and do use RAD to develop kind of small parts. Jazz, RAD, spiral. Right. Yeah, basically. And then clean rooms, you know, if you think of NASA, right? They, why do they use a clean room? Contamination prevention. Can't Contamination that. prevention or defect uh, prevention. You want to prevent prevent the, the defects from happening in the first place. So we have really, really clean rooms, like if you're making CD, CD-ROMs, you know, you can't exactly have uh, dust in, in your environment. There's a variety of people who actually use clean rooms. NASA is the obvious one. Uh, but people that make CD, CD-ROMs or DVDs, they use clean rooms. Uh, there's a lot chip, of computer people who are chip builders. What is it? Chip builders. Yeah, chip builders and you know microprocess builders and things like they all use clean rooms. <laughs> but it's like defect ship. prevention. You want to prevent the defects from happening. I mean, you can't exactly you know send the Hubble space telescope up to the you know space and then find out there's a piece of dust right in the center of the lens. Well, yeah, that might blur out a whole galaxy. Well, you God know? forbid somebody uses the wrong uh, units on something and the thing doesn't work at all because they use the wrong units. That they use. Well, it's, a, it's like it's that's more like the. You give that back to the RAD, or you're using multiple teams, right? The joint app, uh, joint application development. You got one team that's, that's uh, using one set of met or, uh, metrics, another team that's using another set of metrics. Well, that's, how, so that's how one of the Martian landers Yeah, one of the Martian yeah, landers crashed because they were telescope. They used meters instead of uh, one did. Yeah. One of them did, and the other one used one. Did, you know, one of them used one metric, did, and the other one used English, and then and they crashed. And they did the same thing on the Hubble telescope. I think they were alert. Yeah, 
guys hungry yet? Yes. I can't see. I think I'm blind. Alright, let's do a lunch break here.